In this video, you are going to learn how to name alkane molecules. Alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons, which is just a fancy way of seeing molecules that consist of hydrogen and carbon and have only carbon-carbon single bonds. So there's no carbon-carbon double bonds or carbon-carbon triple bonds in these molecules, and that makes them pretty easy to name. Um, we are going to, throughout the year, we're going to learn two different types of nomenclature, two different methods. One is called IUPAC, which is a systematic method. It has rules that you follow and it's pretty easy to learn. And then also we're going to occasionally learn common nomenclature, um, which is just not systematic and that just involves memorizing. Before I get into the actual process of naming alkanes, there's a few words that I want to define for you. First of all, in nomenclature, we're going to be always looking for the parent chain in a molecule, which is defined as the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms. The parent chain dictates the molecule's base name, and I'll explain what is meant by base name as we get into some examples. We're also going to be identifying substituents in molecules. Substituents are uh, an atom or a group of atoms that are attached to the parent chain. Now this does not include hydrogen. Hydrogen is never a, a substituent, but this would be something like a halogen, chlorine or bromine, or maybe some carbons that are coming off of the, the parent chain. Some of our substituents are defined as complex subs substituents. Those are substituents with branches, substituents with substituents. That's a tongue twister. Here's a molecule and you can see that Remember the parent chain, which is the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms, the parent chain is the zigzag that goes from left to right straight across. Uh, this is a substituent, the chlorine atom. This little guy, this two carbon thing, is also a substituent. This is a substituent and it is a complex substituent because it has a branch to it. Hopefully that picture makes sense. Um, and as we do more examples, the difference between a regular substituent and a complex substituent will become clearer. So um, what I'm gonna do is give you a set of four steps of how to go about naming alkanes, and then we're gonna jump into examples and, and use the steps um, to name some molecules. The first thing that you're gonna do in naming is find the parent chain, the longest chain of carbon atoms. And sometimes this is a little tricky because the parent chain is not always left to right across the molecule the way it was in this example. So you have to be a little clever. If there's a tie, if you can find two parent chains that have the same number of carbon atoms in them, then you want to pick the chain that has the most substituents and use it as your parent chain. It's gonna be easier to name than the, the one with fewer substituents. Once you have found your parent chain, you're going to find all of your substituents and give them names. You're gonna go back to your parent chain and number the carbon atoms to give the substituents the lowest possible numbers. So maybe it's left to right, maybe it's right to left, um, but either way, you want to number it so that the substituents have the smallest numbers possible. And then you are going to alphabetize the names of the substituents. If you're using prefixes, Greek, sec, or tert, you're not going to include them in the alphabetization. That probably makes no sense to you at all at this time, but it will make sense once we start doing examples. And then that's all there is to it. So, um, Let's just jump into some examples. Now, there is some memorization involved in nomenclature. In your textbook, on um, tables 4.1 and 4.2 on page 141 and 143, it gives you the names of the parent chains based on the number of carbon atoms they have, and it also gives you names of substituents based on the number of carbon atoms. What I have here is a shortened version of tables 4.1 and 4.2 you need to memorize um, this information for carbons 1 through 10. I'm only showing 1 through 8 here because that's all we'll use here. But you need to go 1 through 10. You need to remember from Gen Chem your Greek prefixes. Uh, 2 for di, 3 for tri, 4 for tetra, 5 is penta, 6 is hexa. And you are also going to need to memorize complex substituents which are not in a table but they're on page 146 in your textbook. There are six of them in your textbook, but you only need to memorize these four. This notation might be a little confusing. The um, black is the complex substituent. This is a three carbon 
substituent. And the squiggly pink is showing the point of attachment for this substituent to the parent chain. So this is a three carbon substituent. It attaches at carbon number two to the parent chain. Its name is isopentyl. I in parentheses, because when you alphabetize isopentyl, I'm sorry, this is isopropyl. When you alphabetize isopropyl, you alphabetize it as an I. This is secbutyl, a four carbon chain attached at carbon number two, alphabetized as a B. This is isobutyl, also alphabetized as an I, and tert-butyl, alphabetized as a B. So let's name some molecules. Remember, step one is to find the parent chain, the longest chain, continuous chain of carbon atoms. This is an example that might fool you because your eyes are going to want to read left to right and you see one, two, three, four, five, six carbons in a row, but the longest parent chain is actually seven carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's step one. We have found our parent chain. Step two is to identify and name the substituent. Here is our substituent. It is a one carbon substituent and a one carbon substituent is named methyl. Step three is to number the carbon atoms of the parent chain to give our substituent the smallest possible number. In this example, we're gonna start numbering down here and number from right to left so that our substituent is on carbon number three instead of one, two, three, four, five, if we were numbering from left to right. Then we just put, our, put all this information together to make the name. We start by naming the substituents in alphabetical order. There's only one in this case. We do need to locate it, so we say three because that's its position. We make a dash and write its name, methyl. And then we name the uh, parent chain. Seven carbon chain is heptane. This is all one word. You see there's no spaces anywhere. We separate letters and numbers from each other with the dash. So anytime you have a letter next to a number, you're going to use a dash to separate it. And that's it. Let's do some more examples. Uh, first thing that we're going to do is look for the parent chain. If we go from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's a six carbon chain. Three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, that's also a six carbon chain. So it looks like whether we go this way or this way, we end up the same with a six carbon chain. Let's go this way to keep it easy on our eyes, left to right. The next thing that we're going to do is locate and name our substituents. Here again is another one carbon substituent, that's methyl. And we have a two carbon substituent, that's ethyl. We're going to number the parent chain to give these substituents the smallest possible number. One, two, three, four, five, six, versus one, two, three, four, five, six. We want to go left to right. One, two, three, four, five, six. In naming this, we're going to put the substituents in alphabetical order. So ethyl will come first, and then methyl, and then the parent name. And don't forget that we need to locate our substituents. Ethyl is on carbon number three. So we call it 3-ethyl with that dash. Methyl is next, also on carbon number three. Don't forget dashes separate letters and numbers. And then our parent chain, the six carbon chain, is hexane. You do need to put the three twice, once for ethyl and once for methyl, because there's no rule that says that the methyl and the ethyl have to be on the same carbon. So it's very important for us to always locate every single substituent with a number. All right, let's try another one. Um, first, we're gonna look for the longest carbon chain. If we go left to right, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If we go from here, to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, that's a tie. If we go from here to the left, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, seven carbon chains in three different ways. 
Remember, in this case, if there is a tie, a three-way tie, we want to use the chain that has the most substituents. So if we go straight across, we're looking at one, two, three, four substituents. If we go this way, we are going to have three substituents. One, two, three. We don't want that. If we go this way, we're going to have one, two. That's even worse. And so we want to use this as our parent chain. Remember, it's easier to name molecules with lots of substituents than to name molecules with not a lot of substituents. Um, so there's that. Then we're going to locate and name our substituents. We've got a lot of methyls. We have three of them. And we have a three carbon substituent, which is called propyl. We want to number our carbon chain to give these substituents the smallest possible numbers. If we go from left to right, they're going to be three, four, five, and six. If we go from right to left, they'll be two, three, four, and five. So we want to go from right to left. We want to name our substituents in alphabetical order. M comes before P in the alphabet. So we're going to name our methyls first. We have three methyls, and we can name them all at the same time. So instead of saying 2-methyl, 3-methyl, 5-methyl, we can say, we can use our Greek prefix to indicate quantity, and we can say that it's trimethyl for 3. We do still have to locate the position of every single methyl individually. We can't just say trimethyl. We have to say where they are. So we have a methyl on carbon number 2, and we have a methyl on carbon number 3, and we have a methyl on carbon number five. When we have numbers in a row, we separate the numbers from each other with commas. So we have 2,3,5-trimethyl. And then we want to locate our propyl. It's on carbon number four. And then the whole entire parent chain, which is the seven carbon chain, is heptane. So sometimes alkanes have their carbon atoms in a ring. In that case, we call the molecule a cycloalkane. And we name it pretty much the exact same way. The only thing that's different is that we throw the prefix cyclo in front of the parent names or in front of the substituents, if it is a substituent. And still, with this molecule, our first step is to look for the, the parent chain, the longest continuous chain of carbons. Now, when you're dealing with a cyclic alkane, um, your parent chain has to either be the whole entire ring as an entity or the whole entire substituent on the ring as an entity, but you can't go substituent into the ring. So this is not a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 carbon chain. It can be a 6 carbon chain for the ring, or it could be a 4 carbon chain, but we have to separate the ring from the substituent. Um, the 6 is obviously bigger than the 4 carbon substituent, so this is the, the parent chain of the molecule, the 6-membered ring. The substituent right here is a 4 carbon chain, that's a butyl, 4 carbons, butyl. Um, step three is to number the carbon atoms on the parent chain. Now in this case, and we want to number them to give the, the substituent the lowest possible number. And in this case, we can start numbering wherever we want within the ring. We do want the butyl group to have the smallest possible number, so we're going to say that it is on carbon number one. And then we're going to number around the ring. Uh, you can go either clockwise or counterclockwise. In this case, it doesn't matter. If there were other substituents, you would go clockwise or counterclockwise to give the other substituents the smallest possible number. Um, when you have a, a cyclic molecule and it has only one substituent on it, like this, you don't really need to locate the position of the substituent because it's implied. So uh, we can say one butyl but we don't have to include the one if we don't want to because the butyl group has to be on carbon number one. So one butyl, I'm gonna take that one off because it's implied. The parent chain of this molecule is cyclohexane. 
hexane for the six carbon chain cyclo because it's in a ring, a cyclic. Here's another cycloalkane. And looking for the parent chain, again, remember, we have to either look at the ring or look at substituents, but we can't cross from substituent into ring when we're trying to find the longest chain. So this is also a six-membered ring. Um, it's a cyclohexane. We have two substituents, this one and this one. Now this is methyl, the single carbon substituent. This is a complex substituent. It's a branched substituent. So this is a three carbon substituent that's attached at the second carbon. And if we look over here, the three carbon substituent that's attached to the second carbon is isopropyl. Alphabetized, ooh, I can't spell. Isopropyl, alphabetized as an I. We're going to number our ring um, to give these two substituents the smallest possible numbers. We're either gonna number it one, two, three, four, five, six, or we're gonna number one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, in this case, where you can get a one, two, if you go this way, or a one, two, if you go this way, we want to give the lowest number to the substituent that will come first in the name. That's gonna be isopropyl. So this will be one, this will be two, and then we'll go around the ring. And again, um, you don't technically need to use number one if you don't want to. In this case, because there's two substituents, it's just um, it's a good idea to include it. One isopropyl, two methyl, cyclo, I'm gonna run out of room, hexane. There should not, normally there shouldn't be a dash in the middle of cyclohexane, but I ran out of room. One last example, and this is kind of an unusual example. So um, in looking for the l largest parent chain, remember we're gonna look at the ring versus substituents. We have a four-membered ring and a five-membered substituent. That means that this is the parent chain of the molecule, the five-membered, what looks like a substituent off of a ring. This is a straight chain with a cyclic substituent. This is our substituent. It's a four-membered ring. Four-membered parent cyclic alkane would be cyclobutane. A four-membered cyclic substituent is cyclobutyl. Number the parent chain to give cyclobutyl the smallest possible number. That's left to right. One cyclobutyl butane. You cannot leave the number one off of this molecule's name. You can never leave the number one off when your parent chain is a straight chain because that cyclobutyl group could be anywhere on the chain. It doesn't have to be on carbon number one. And that is pretty much everything you need to know about naming alkanes.